In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use GitHub Actions across multiple GitHub repositories. So it's a um, action that was created that allows you to trigger another repository um, and then either um, just trigger it and for, don't worry about the result or trigger it, wait for the result. If it fails, it can um, propagate the failure on uh, your own repository. Um, you can also ignore the failure. Um, those are all options with it. So pretty much the goal here is, uh, the re reason why it was created was um, if you have one repository, let's say with your API and you're doing deployment of your front end, let's say, and you wanna, um, every time you deploy your front end, you wanna make sure your API is up to date. You can uh, run, you know, commit to your main branch, do the commit, and then trigger your API, let the API do the deployment. If that deployment fails, you can propagate the failure back to your front end and fail your front end as well. So then you can then go in and fix your API properly or see what's wrong, uh, fix it, and then rerun it. And so in this successful case, it, uh, you could uh, make a change, commit it to your front end, which would then trigger your, ma your main branch on your front end, which triggers a, a specific branch or your main branch on your back end. It does the back end deployment. It then takes the successful case, returns it, and then you can continue on with your front end deployment. And that was the whole purpose of this uh, action. So it's, if you just, uh, I have a written tutorial. Um, I've included a link to it in the, in the description below. If I'm moving fast at any point during this tutorial, just pause um, and, and catch up. It's all written down as well. Uh, so I clicked the link right here. So if you go to convictional slash trigger workflow and wait, uh, you can view it on the marketplace. I'll just open it up in another tab. Uh, we're on version 1.3.0 here. Um, and then you can see the readme has all the arguments set uh, for that current moment. It's a fairly simple um, action. And I can actually explain it to you all, uh, to, to all the details of it. Um, and we can go through all of that. I'm just gonna start by showing you a demo of it. We can get this all set up just so you can see how you can use it. Um, let's, so let's, get, let's start with the demo. I'm just gonna go GitHub slash new. And I'm gonna create a new. Uh, I'm gonna create a new repository. I'm gonna call this trigger uh, demo dash trigger one. Uh, so I'm putting one on it. This is you know I'm, I'm actually changing. I'll, I'll take that back. Demo front end. I'm gonna call it. And the demo front end is in my case the person doing the triggering, or the repository doing the triggering. So I'm gonna make it private just because it doesn't need to uh, be visible. And I'm gonna hit create. Then I'm gonna open up a second tab and do slash new again. Uh, this time I make a backend repository. So this is gonna be called demo backend. And this is the one that's gonna get triggered. And so I'm not gonna build a full backend just for this demo. Um, we're just gonna add sleep timers and um, um, show like we might add failures on purpose. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna open up my terminal here. I was just doing another one of these tutorials. So I'm gonna open up a new window in my, uh, in my new t uh, terminal window. I'm just gonna zoom in here a little bit. I, made it, I already made it too big. Oh no, I lost it. I'm gonna switch onto my de desktop. So that was CD desktop I did, like that. Um, and then I'm gonna make a new directory. I'm just gonna call it demo trigger and wait. And I'm gonna switch into the demo trigger and wait. And then I'm gonna clone both projects. So I'm gonna start with my front end here. And I'm gonna do uh, git clone demo front end. And then I'm gonna clone my back end here. Git clone and then my back end. Okay, so what we're gonna start with is on the back end, we're gonna add. Um, let me just go back to my written tutorial so I stay on, on track here. I give a full explanation here. Okay, so we're gonna start with our back end, which is gonna be um, just a sleep. We're just gonna add 10 seconds sleep on our back end. And so we're gonna start with that. So I'm gonna switch into my back end project, demo back end, and I'm gonna open up my project in Atom. Why Atom? Personal preference, you can use anything you want. Start by adding a readme. I'm just gonna call it backend so you know which one I'm working with. I'm gonna go new folder, dot GitHub, uh, and then I'm gonna do workflows underneath that. I think I just typed that wrong. Nope. 
workflows. Uh, and then I'm gonna do master.yaml. Then I'm gonna go back to my tutorial here. I'm just gonna copy everything here. I'm gonna I'll explain it in a second. Okay, we pasted this in. Uh, this was a direct copy and paste. Um, hopefully I fixed this by, by the time you're watching it, but if I haven't, I'm just gonna move this up. I actually just ran this and it failed because it was like invalid syntax. I think it's supposed to be this. I'm looking at an example uh, right here and it says like you can pass in inputs. We don't have any inputs, so we're just going to, I'm gonna open up back my terminal, do git add all, git commit. This isn't a real uh, project, so uh, um, I'm calling mine fixed because I actually already committed my original stuff up and it actually broke. Um, you're committing for the first time because I fixed this in the edit. I'm going to open up my new project. Demo backend is what it's called. So I've now just fixed this. So I have my readme, I have my workflows, and I'll have two, two actions triggered here, but as you can see, I originally commit this up and it, it broke because of my invalid line seven. Uh, now it's working, so it ran, it ran the build API, it echoed it, it lasted 10 seconds because of the sleep. So this is now all working. Our backend is good to go. We're gonna move on to our front end now. So I'm opening up my terminal again. I'm just gonna go back a directory and then I'm gonna go into my front end. And then I'm gonna open it up again in Atom. Um, so let's start by adding a readme um, just so we know which one we're working on. So I'm just gonna call this front end. The instructions for the, all of this is our, I'm gonna switch back to my Chrome, it is on my written tutorial. It's also on the readme here um, of the actual action. I'm gonna copy it from my written tutorial, so I, I have a screenshot going through it. Um, and I'm just going to copy that all in. I'm gonna do the same steps, so create a GitHub folder and then a workflows folder. Um, and then a master.yaml, I'm gonna call it. And I'm gonna paste it, all right, it's called deploy here. But on pushes to master, I'm gonna run my web app. So in this case, it build my web app, so this would be like a front end. I'm going to then use version 1.3.0, and I changed my name here. It's going to be uh, backend. I'm going to trigger the backend repo. The file I want to trigger is not the deploy.yaml. I've changed it. It's called master.yaml, um, and then it needs a GitHub access token to to actually trigger. It will run. Uh, I can. We're going to go through the arguments in a second. Um, let's say hypothetically this is successful and then does the deployment of the web app. In terms of arguments, looking back at this project, I didn't even mention this, but if you use this project, please star the repository. You can see all the required ones and we, we have all the required ones covered. Um, next is uh, the reference. So I'm gonna use uh, main as the default one. The waiting interval is the number of seconds it takes between checking the, the GitHub API for um, the outcome of your results. Input is the input string, like a client payload. Propagate failure is if the, if like for example, in our case, if the back end fails, we want the front end to also fail. So you can change it to be false if you, if you don't care if the back end fails, you just want to uh, run. Uh, if you don't want to wait for the back end to run, you just change that to be false. And if you don't want to trigger the remote uh, workflow and you just want to check the results for some reason, you can just also use this argument too. So we're using the bare, moment, uh, bare minimum number, number of arguments. Um, the only thing we're missing from being able to commit this up is that personal access token. And that is the um, some user who has access to your repository needs to uh, be authenticated uh, against the GitHub API to say that, yes, this person has access, they can see the outcomes of here. And so we're gonna have to set that up. So the way you set that up is you go to github.com slash settings. I'm going to go to, you head down to developer settings and you go to personal access tokens. Uh, I'm gonna go to generate, I, you select. You would select generate new. Uh, you would have saw that ten seconds ago. I'm just going to call this demo for trigger. 
what you need in terms of access is repo access. Um, you just need to know the status of it. I think that's everything. And then you hit generate. I'm going to copy mine. And so if we could look at our, our workflow, I have a G underscore access token is what I'm storing in. So I'm just going to head over to my demo front end repository. I'm going to go to settings on the right and you have to be admin to see settings. I'm going to go down to secrets, a new repository secret, a G access token. I'm just going to paste that value right in there I hit add and we're good to commit this all up. So let's try that out. So add all commit added workflow. And I'm going to do a push right to master just because, um, so as I kind of mentioned, even on a push to master, or sorry, only on push to master, will this front end trigger? So we're going to head, so I have my readme, I have my workflow in there. Let's head over to actions tab to see what, what, what is happening live. Uh, so I'm going to click on run web app. That was the name of my job I created. So it's going to start by uh, pulling in uh, version 1.3 of our Docker container. So of the actual action, just, it's just set up. The first step here is 10 seconds of building the web app. Uh, I'm going to switch over to my, so it's built the web app. Now it's going to start by triggering, uh, no reference found for main. Okay. So that's a problem. So something's gone wrong. So, uh, it's a success because it's pulled in the last job and I'll explain that what would happen there in a second. So it didn't actually trigger here. And what's happened is, uh, between, I haven't switched my account over, but now people use the default of main as their master branch. So that's why we have this option here. We're going to go back into our actions here. And we're just going to change this ref to be main, uh, master, sorry, master, not main, defaults. I'm going to add that in. I'm just going to commit that back up. And so we're not good yet. Technically that wasn't, it didn't even trigger. And I'll explain what, why that passed though in, in about a second after we get this working. So I added the fix in, it's gonna run again. It's gonna take 10 seconds to build. It should take 10 seconds to run the trigger workflow because it's gonna build the backend API. And then it might also take an additional 10 seconds to uh, wait for the results because it's pulling every 10 seconds, right? Um, so let's check our back end here. So as you can see, it it did trigger. Uh, it hit the run API. Um, this was not me. Um, so so mainly ran by Keith Weaver. That was the personal access token. Uh, this uh, workflow dispatches a manual run. If I look here, uh, I have 10 seconds. It ran and built. It was successful. Let's go back to the logs here. As you can see, it's 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 pulling that backend results. So it's in, you know, it's in progress. And then it's now successful. And the conclusion was it was successful. It com it's now completed. So we say, yes, it was successful. And then we continue on and we deployed it. So that worked six, worked out well. Um, let's do that one more time. This time I'm going to, I'm first gonna load up a change on the front end. So I'm just gonna create a, empty file just so we have some sort of change. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fail the back end and you should see that error propagate up into the front end. So call this git at all, git commit. I'm gonna call it trigger because that's all I'm doing. I'm committing the file so it can trigger it. I won't push it yet. I'm gonna go back into my back end. So CD and then Jeez, I'm just gonna open up Adam from the root of the project. This is switching back and forth is painful. So I'm gonna go into my backend here and I'm gonna modify my workflow here. So it's gonna sleep for 10 seconds and it's gonna say, then it's gonna do an exit one, which is an error code. It's an invalid, uh, it's a failure. And this means this whole pipeline is gonna fail. So let's head back into my backend 
and we're going to commit this change up. So this failure on purpose. So I'm on demo backend here. This this main run is going to fail as well. So it's just going to confirm what we already know. And as you can see, it failed. It exited with a code one. So it's an invalid run. That's what we're looking for. So now that we have this change on the front end ready, so let's switch back out to the front end. You just do a git push where we now push that change up and as so much of last time it's going to run the front end then you're going to run the back end and then it's going to um, fail and the failure should stop the front end from going out as well So it's just, it's just grabbing the, the, the action from the market, GitHub Marketplace. So it's running. It's probably triggered this one. There it is, it's been triggered. It's gonna run for 10 seconds. In progress, sleeping for 10 seconds. It's already failed, so it just it's a coincidence that I'm telling it to pause for 10 seconds and it's taking 10 seconds to check. So it, it finds the conclusion of failure, it's propping it, propagating that up, and now it's failed our front end run as well. So this is expected. Um, this is everything you need to know. You are set up to use um, this, this action. It's really, really fantastic. I mean, I was the one who built it <laughs> and other people have contributed to it. Um, the only other thing I want to bring to your attention, so we're going to kind of talk about the code in a second. The, oh, there is one existing issue, and that was what we saw when you get something part when you don't trigger a workflow. It always it's just pulling the GitHub API for the most uh, most recent uh, job outcome. So in this case, it pulled for that and the outcome. I know it was successful, but we hadn't actually triggered it successfully. So um, you might get a few false positives. I'm, I'm working on a fix, or an, and feel free to contribute a fix for this one. There is one small bug there. But now let's, uh, let's just talk about the code a little bit. So the, the nice part of this is it's all fairly simple. It's all a single bash script. Um, it all uses the GitHub API. So let's start by just scrolling down to the very bottom where we find the function main. This is everything it's gonna do. First thing it does, it validates all the arguments that it's provided. And so I can scroll back up. This is the validated arguments. So all the optional ones, it populates them with values. Um, it checks that you have all the required ones. Uh, and yeah, and, and so here's like, for example, the default main. So that's validate our arguments, fairly simple. The next one is if you said yes, trigger the workflow, it calls the trigger workflow function. So let's take a look at that one. The trigger workflow function is literally on the GitHub API. Um, API grabs your, you know, the owner of the repository, and then does the actions endpoint, and it just does a dispatch. And that's why we have that manual dispatch is we're triggering the workflow, the workflow file is required. We're making a post request out there, and we get the bearer, um, which is our uh, personal access token. We use that reference, which was the main branch or whatever, a commit hit, a specific commit, a branch, something like that. And then the last part is, is inputs, and inputs, you can see here and under, I just, um, if you just Google like workflow dispatch, you can set uh, inputs for, um, for a work workflow dispatch. So let's say I want a name and this allows me to commit, say like I have a value on my front end repository and I want to send it to my back end. Well, I can enter in, for example, name here. So on my back end, um, underneath workflow dispatch, I give inputs a name and I'm able to pass that through. Sorry, let me just find. Where am I looking here? I'm able to pass that through in the inputs 
um, value. So this would be a JSON string, a stringified JSON essentially, um, as mentioned here. And that would be passed here and you put name in there and you just pass the name that you want to give and you can do all that building in the actual front end workflow. Jumping back to, I'm gonna jump all the way here. Jumping back to our code, let's continue stepping through this. So right away it sleeps for the waiting interval. The reason is you trigger, it take, obviously it's gonna take a second to get started. There's no way you're gonna get an immediate result. So we just pause and we start with 10 seconds because um, um, if you set it to like five minutes, it's great that you know it fails for five, it, it waits five minutes till it lets it run, but then it will check and if it's not done, it will wait another five minutes. So if you know you have a really long running um, process and you don't need an immediate response, setting it to five minutes is great, but like 10 seconds is a pretty good time. We don't need to like just constantly hit the GitHub API. Um, and scrolling back to my main, so that's everything for trigger workflow. Scrolling back down to the wait, wait for workflow to finish. Um, again, here it is. Here's work, wait, for, wait for workflow to finish. As you can see, it just pulls in all the, the latest runs uh, from that workflow file running, right? Same thing, it grabs a list of it, grabs the first item of that list, and it grabs the ID. Um, there is a world where um, you trigger two things at the exact same time and there's it can potentially get the wrong run, um, but that's really, I, I think that's near, really, really uncommon. Um, so it grabs the ID of that last workflow and then what's happening is it just pulls, pull, sorry, it pulls that ID um, and checks the, the status and the conclusion of it. And the status is like, is it running or not? And then the conclusion is, did it fail or succeed? If it succeeded, it says yes. If it failed and you want to propagate the failure, it exits with a one. Um, and that's all of the code. It's fairly simple. Feel If you want to extend it or something doesn't work as expected, feel free to contribute. Um, again, if you're using it, please star it. Uh, I appreciate the support. Um, if I post new videos every week on, on YouTube here, so please subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching.